All right, we're going to switch gears here uh, for a moment back to domestic news. Millions of people with serious allergies carry those EpiPens, right, in case they have to reverse deadly reactions. But in the past seven years, the EpiPens price has soared more than 480 percent, up to $600. The device accounted for 94 percent of epinephrine auto injectors, creating a virtual monopoly. Just 26 percent of prescriptions filled today are for the brand name EpiPen. 48 percent are for Mylan's authorized generic version. Now, other companies now claim 26 percent of the market. Anna Werner shows us why there's confusion over the treatment's costs. This is the new AviQ. Things have changed in the year since we first visited the Henniger household in the suburbs of Indianapolis. Two of the six children here have severe allergies. And last year at this time, parents Justin and Lexi were unhappy about the prices for their EpiPens. 600 bucks for a two-pack. We weren't really anticipating it being $600. Right. Under increased pressure from patients and lawmakers, Mylan was forced to explain the price hikes. Do you think you were charging too much at 600? Sir, the, we believe it was a fair price and we've just now lowered that price by half. Mylan launched a generic version for $300 and boosted a coupon program to cut patients' costs. CVS Pharmacy then offered a different generic injector for $109. Then this past June, the Hennigers got a letter from their insurer. They are no longer going to be covering the EpiPens. They will only cover the generic version. So they have taken these completely off of their plan. But at their pharmacy, generics were out of stock. That's when they looked at the AviQ. This is very personal for us. And Evan we, and Eric we, Edwards what, invented what the AviQ after growing up with severe allergies. We carry it uh, in our pockets every day. Every day one, right. yep. And, and of course, you're, you're supposed to carry two, yep. right? So I have that as well. It's smaller and comes with its own voice instructions. black end against outer thigh. Basically, anybody who picks up the device is able to have a voice guiding them. What do I do next? Yeah, I think that's key. It's all about confidence. And we saw hesitation. That one is a lot bigger. So this one's a little easier to hold. Lexi Henniger liked the product, but not the price. The AviQ lists for $4,500. So that was kind of disappointing. They actually called me before they filled my prescription to ask if I wanted them to go ahead and fill it. But drug maker Kaleo stepped in with its affordability program, and the family's out-of-pocket costs went to zero. How is that possible? Kaleo CEO Spencer Williamson. The pricing and reimbursement system in this country is broken. and. We're committed to always putting patients and families first. You have a drug that has a $4,500 price. How do people get that for free? So it's an access model built for patients. And so the way our program works is that anyone with commercial insurance, whether it's covered or not, even a high deductible plan, they'll get it for zero dollars. But Richard Evans, a pharmaceutical industry analyst from SSR Health, is skeptical. The only insurer that's going to say yes to a $4,500 claim for an epinephrine device in a world where you can buy them for $109 is the one that hasn't figured out the game yet. The game, Evans says, to gain market share, a company can give away most of its prescriptions for free and hope the insurers who do pay those higher prices make up for it. It's an insane system. No rational designer would sit down with a clean sheet of paper and say, you know what, <laughs> let's do it this way. But somebody in that system somewhere pays for that high price. So many plans cover the product because it's the right thing for their patients and their physicians and they're very enthusiastic about it. Where plans don't cover it, the entity that steps in and pays is Kaleo. Mm -hmm. Patients like the Hennigers say they'll take any break they can get. Up until now, there weren't really any other options for auto injectors. There are very few, so I'm hoping it will help kind of even the playing field and bring down prices. Anna Werner is here on set now. And Anna, so you brought some of these super expensive devices. You're going to show us how they work. So basically, this is called the, this is the AviQ. And what's different about this is you'll hear a beep. This talks to if someone. you are ready to okay. use, pull off red safety guard. Okay, so then they take off the safety guard. They put it on their thigh. thigh. Then press firmly and hold in place. Five, four, three, two, 
and then it would give you the shot. Now this is a this is a trainer, of course, it's not going to give me a shot. Right. But basically, what you have is you have a device that instead of a child, okay, <laughs> okay, I won't shut now up. simmer down. Yeah, now we have to pay it to shut up. <laughs> okay, so okay, so the difference here is. The, the guys who invented this are twins who grew up with severe allergies. Right. And they said, you know, EpiPens to them were big, kind of clunky, didn't fit in the pocket, and weren't very user friendly mm. in the sense that in a panic situation, when you're having uh, a reaction that could put you into shock, you or a family member or a friend has to figure out how does this thing work. Mm -hmm. This was their answer to that. Now they don't have to figure it out. A child can listen to this and figure out how to do it right and how to use this um, but of course in the pharmaceutical industry the pricing is not uh, transparent to right. anybody mm -hmm. on virtually any drug yeah. these days, so right? Why does a drug cost what it costs? Why does this cost what it costs? Right, so let us talk a bit about that because yeah. people will remember the big brouhaha about EpiPens and right. it seems these products come with a lot of controversy right. when it comes to pricing. So you had a year ago basically EpiPens price went way up mm -hmm. and patients were saying, wait a minute, now it's $600 for a two pack, something that we used to get for peanuts. And so there was a lot of pressure. No pun intended, obviously. Right. Yeah. yeah, no pun intended, sorry about that. Um, and, and so in Congress, there was a lot of heat on manufacturers. So Mylan, the maker of EpiPen, then introduced a uh, generic version mm -hmm. and then CVS Pharmacy introduced an even cheaper generic version that cost like hundred nine dollars right so that you know should have helped a lot of patients for that drug to become more affordable again then you have other makers coming in and saying you know what we can do this better mm -hmm. and they introduced this but this for a two-pack is forty five hundred dollars and that now, is exponentially more. Okay, so as a patient you'd say well I can't pay forty five hundred dollars right. and if my insurer won't cover it Right? So then the maker of this says, it's okay, we have an affordability program, you will get this for no out-of-pocket costs. Now what we said to the manufacturer, the CEO of this company, Kaleo, I asked him, said, how does that work? How yeah. is it that you have a drug that costs $4,500 for a two-pack and yet you can give it away to people for free? Don't you have to make money somehow? Mm -hmm. And he says, well, their model is they have an affordability program. They give it away to free for to, to free for patients whose insurance companies won't cover it or have other financial stressors, right? And then there are insurance companies that do pay for it. There are there are insurance yes, companies that are paying yes, thousands of there, dollars for two sh of these shots. They're paying whatever their negotiated price okay, is, which I don't may know be less we, than right. I don't know that we know what their net price mm -hmm. is on, and and those typically are not disclosed. It's probably not forty five hundred. There's probably some negotiated price, but basically, if you're Kaleo and you make this, you're trying to figure out how do we juggle these prices so that the people who pay help to pay for those who don't mm -hmm. and then what the company would tell you is it, uh, that they also help you know the company also puts forth to help is, out right. but basically the, here's the here's the game increase market share you need increased market share so that more people want your product so that you have more pressure to get insurers to pay for your product yeah. and then maybe eventually the price comes down so, Who knows? so the idea is, if we make it attractive enough, meaning zero to the consumer, they will demand. They will demand it. That and that's this is what I need. Pressure right. on insurance companies to cover it. Right. And then it gets paid for because look, Kaleo can't pay for every single one of these for everybody. No. You go out of business, right? Is, so. is this is this kosher? I mean, it, do we need more transparency in how much it costs to actually manufacture these drugs? What the value actually is to the consumer? I Which think, ones are more yeah. effective? I think there are many, many consumer advocates, members of Congress, even people in the industry, in the pharmaceutical industry themselves, would tell you there is a need for a much better system. There is a need for much more transparency. Nobody knows what a drug is going to cost. Nobody knows why a drug costs yeah. what it costs, which sounds crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know why a car pretty much costs what it costs, right? You added options, more expensive. Right, Maybe yeah. a BMW is not the same price as a Ford. We understand why. Why is one drug 10 times the price of another that does the same thing. Yeah, often our pharmaceutical companies will say, oh, you gotta factor in things like the promotion, and here we are well, promoting yeah. this product, Don't right? Don't forget there's a, big, there's a big pharmacy benefit managers. These are the managers who negotiate prices on behalf of their clients, like big corporations, like CBS News, whoever. Mm -hmm. So pharmacy benefit managers are kind of in there as the middleman, and that makes the price 
game a lot different than you have in perhaps other industries right. because they're when pharmacy benefit managers negotiate basically the pharmaceutical manufacturers want to keep their products on the registry of the PBMs mm -hmm. but to do that they will then raise the price so that PBMs make more money off the spread. Right. Can't explain all I that. Was and say, the health, health industry, seconds here, not yeah. the same as the car industry when you're talking about people's health and their allergic reactions. Well, it's not, right? right? And that's why I think a lot of people are so frustrated and so upset. Um, but if someone wants these right now, guess what? The company's going to make it happen. So if you're a patient, like our patients that we interviewed for the story, they're like, you know what? Any break we can get, we'll take it. We want these. The company makes it possible. End of story. We have six kids, two with severe allergies. We need we need something that works. Sure. And Werner, we're going to have you back with the flow chart, perhaps a PowerPoint <laughs> presentation. You can explain yeah, it all to us. Thank you. That's a good idea. Thanks, Anna.